But yeah, what are some other cool alternate history movies? I was trying to think. Like, Who Framed Roger Rabbit's pretty cool. That's more... Oh, what the hell? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into the PC cult classic by Crimson Skies by Microsoft, a gamer's game company. Just kidding, Microsoft obviously got their start creating operating systems and spreadsheets and all that jazz, and it's only really in like recent decades. I mean, I guess decades now, because they've been in the Xbox business for a while, but Microsoft was trying to kind of break into the game industry for a long time. Um, this is one of the games that they made that is, I wouldn't say this was like widely popular, but it did have like a cult following. It's kind of like an Indiana Jones, Uncharted-ish kind of game. It takes place in an alternate history 1930s where America broke up and then air travel became the most common form of transportation, which led to a lot of air piracy. So it kind of feels like a bit like Tailspin. If you ever watched that old cartoon Tailspin where like everything was plane based, um, it's kind of like that. And, yeah, uh, I guess Canada collapsed too, actually. I looked up a map before I started to play this game just to sort of see what kind of alternate history this really was. And, uh, yeah, most of the Canadian provinces kind of broke up and, and joined the U.S. You know, traitors! Um, it's really only the Republic of Quebec and the Protectorate of Ontario that remained can Canadian true. So Ontario and Quebec, oddly enough. I mean, Quebec left Canada and did their own thing. So I'll say that Ontario is the only true Canada that remains in this in this uh, alternate history, which makes me feel makes me feel a bit of pride being a, a native Ontarian myself. Anyway, as you can see in this this awesome 1930s newsreel, we got some uh, cool planes going on, um, and this game is just going to be taking place in the 30s. You're going to be playing a, ca a, a character named. Uh, Zachariah, I think. That could be him. He, he was, he's was he been described as like a Han Solo type character. But again, it's the 30s. I prefer to think of him as an Indiana Jones. So without further ado, let's hop, uh, let's hop in here. Um, so here is our awesome title screen. Um, now, I will say that this game was insanely hard to get working. Um, so if there are some glitches along the way, please bear with me. Uh, I'll talk more about the technical challenges in a bit. But let's go ahead and hop into the campaign here. Yeah, Nathan Zachary. That's your default name. That name will not do for us. We need to be Indiana J. Oh, if I can spell Indiana. Indiana. Now I'm like all worried about my spelling. Is that it? Indiana J. Yeah, looks wrong to me for some reason. Indiana J, the most intrepid of airline pilot peoples you still alive in there yeah still alive what could have happened to me works the party the cookout the so here's the backstory i guess um long story short i'm a dude who flies a plane who gets into trouble we'll figure out the rest together guys We're, it's always more fun to kind of invent our own backstories here so change memento what you have Ooh, that that is a night that's a saucy memento i'll tell you what Geez, so is that one. What is this? What are these? Is this like his uh, his exotic ladies picture? Oh, these, oh, the ladies are getting less exotic the further we go, though. Oh, and then it just turns into a dog. And then it... What is this? This is hilarious. We're totally going with that one. That's the best of all of them. Okay. Uh, plane construction. This is kind of cool. We'll call this uh, the Beast Hemoth, of course. Our default configuration, sure. And you can go ahead and you can uh, customize your beast team in. So look at this. This is actually cool. It's like kind of a biplane uh, kind of kind of design. Um, I know in the Xbox version, planes can shoot lightning and stuff like that. I don't know if we're going to see that in this game. But you can go ahead and you can like customize the engine. And so you can have like a bigger engine, which will cost more money. And you can like affect the, the armor units and stuff. Now for all you people out there who know about Battletech... This might look vaguely similar to Mech Warrior, how you could go in and like customize your mechs. And I will just say the creator of this game, surprisingly enough, or maybe not surprisingly enough, is actually none other than Jordan Weissman, the fellow who created Battletech and Shadowrun back in the day. So there you go. He kind of came into Microsoft's uh, fold when Microsoft purchased FASA or the FASA Corporation, which made Battletech and MechWarrior. That's why all the MechWarrior games suddenly were coming from Microsoft, because Microsoft bought out FASA. And so Jordan Weissman here wanted to create 
uh, a, a game that sort of took the 1600s Caribbean pirates and brought them to the United States. And he decided to be cool to do it in the air. Anyway, let's go ahead and go to our next mission. Enough dilly-dallying. So, all right. Those Medusas must throw some kind of party. <laughs> the can okay, I guess the mission briefing is all audio-based. Jack's filled you in on the real reason we're in Hawaii. Drake's goal. Yeah. Hey, Drake's goal, just like Nathan Drake. Now the list of potential sites down to three. The first site is in this cliff here, on the Kapaui Islands. Hey, how does shipwreck? Okay, so we might have to check out this little zone right here. Got it? Yeah, yeah, the treasure. The survivors may have rescued the gold from the wreck and hid it up on this cliff. Or I figure they may have buried it in this valley here at the second site. Okay. Or maybe the wreckage washed ashore into the same... So I'm guessing we're just going to have to check these various sites. I get it. Whatever, let's just go for it. We'll figure out the rest as we go. Find the main treasure site, drop off Jack at the treasure site, guard the treasure site until reinforcements arrive, and dock with the Pandora. Let's go. The music does sound very piratey. Do you, are you guys getting like kind of a pirate vibe from all this? It totally makes sense. They wanted sort of a piratey style game. So here's our uh, awesome airship, Justice Wealth, Lovers and Death. And I guess we're going to launch very soon. Reminds me of the scene in Indiana Jones when they're getting on the Zeppelin. You remember in, like, Last Crusade? And Indy's like, no ticket! And he punches that Nazi guy and, like, dumps him out the uh, the back of the plane. I wonder if we're gonna... By the way, that is an awesome airplane. That's like a hot rod of airplanes. It does not look like it has enough speed, though, to maintain uh, its not falling out of the sky. But I guess it does. Okay, so here we are. This is us. This is us in this awesome plane. Oh, man! That guy does not know how to fly. I mean, I, like, look at me. I look like I'm flying drunk, but that other guy, I feel like he, uh, he was just zooming all over the place. Okay. Now, I am playing with a keyboard, by the way, because on a PC game, um, it was very common back in the day to play these games on keyboards. I feel like controllers have become more and more common in, in recent years, uh, to the point where, like, now, because of, like, consoles being so popular... Uh, controllers are just the default way of controlling things, but I remember it wasn't always that way. Back in the day, like, some, some rich kids had controllers, but most of us played old-school games like Mech Warrior and stuff. Just played it with a keyboard. Are we supposed to go in here, or... Oh my god! Oh, there's a giant spider web! Oh! I think I'm going down! <laughs> Fatal crash. They're like, just go into that cave and investigate. I'm like, not a problem. And then the next transmission for me is like, Mayday! Mayday! I'm going down! Did you guys realize a cave is nothing but four walls? We're going to forget about that awful, terrible performance and give this another shot here. All right. So as far as the, the technical troubles with this game go, this game was released back in the 90s, and it was never formally updated for modern computers. So... And, and by the way, when this game came out, it also was plagued with technical issues. Like, it had a bug where it would delete your save games. Like, talk about a game-breaking bug. That's second only to, like, a bug that formats your hard drive. So, when this game came out, it had bugs. If you try and play this game on a modern computer, it's not going to work. And what actually happened is that fans of this game went on to the NVIDIA... Uh, forums to try to brainstorm ways of fixing this game because the game is incompatible with modern uh, graphics card drivers and the fans even asked NVIDIA for help and NVIDIA basically just ignored them. It was just like not interested in helping with this old game. Uh, oh, it looks like we're getting glitches already. So our radar is kind of glitched out. Again, we're just going to have to deal with it, guys. Oh! Oh! Because <laughs> I tried all sorts of things, and I could not get this uh, to work correctly. Um, we can, by the way, play this in software mode, and things seem to work, but it looks really crappy in software mode. So, there we go. There's another site that we've explored. There's some, some kind of truck gun that's after me, or that's just hanging out around there. Totally going to gun that down and destroy it. Oh, yeah, we blew up the bridge, too. So anyway, NVIDIA was not interested in helping the fans fix this game. And so instead, the fans basically tried all sorts of things that didn't work. And then in, in sort of a last-minute desperation, they asked a modder who mods games uh, named Time Slip. Is that his name? I've got it written down here. Time Slip for help. And he actually devised a fix. He programmed an entire patch for the game, which Microsoft and everyone else refused to do. 
So that was actually that's actually pretty cool of him. And you can use the fix to play the game on modern computers. It is glitchy though. So on my computer here, I'm, I'm having to run this game at a really high resolution, like uh, 1280 by 720. The game was designed for 640 by 40. Like it was not designed for such a high resolution. But if I try and run the game on any resolution it was designed for, like 800 by 600 or something, oh, what, what? <laughs> Damn it, I turned my speed all the way down and I crashed into the water. Where are we looking here? Did, did I did I see anything there? Okay, there, here's the main treasure site. We got it. Man, I am so bad at flying. Oh, no! I keep turning the speed all the way down because I'm trying to turn, but... All right, my ship... Or my, my plane looks like it's been in heavy combat, but it's... And it's like the engine's like struggling to run, but that's just that's just an average flying day for old uh, Indiana J here. Um, do we have to like parachute him in or fly over? All right, there you go. He he simultaneously wants to explore the treasure site, and he also just wants to get the hell off my plane. He's like, this guy is like literally going to kill us all. I'm just uh, parachuting out of this thing. Anyway, so Time Split programmed the entire fix. It does kind of work on modern computers, but there's also some bugs with it. And, like, it's not even his responsibility to fix that. Like, the fact that there even is a patch that works is cool. And, um, but yeah, the game is buggy. Microsoft never bothered to fix it. This game is on, like, the GOG's wish list for a lot of players. Like, they wish that a modern version would come out that was fixed. But it's, like, just, mo this, you know, Microsoft just has no interest. I mean, you can play the Xbox version of this game if you like. Which is not a port or anything, it's actually a sequel to this game, I believe. Oh my god, I just got shot down in two seconds because I was so damaged. Eject! Eject! Oh, he did bail! He to My guy totally bailed! That's awesome. Do I get another plane or do I just straight up fail the mission? There's like heroic music. He heroically bailed from his plane and fled like the glorious coward he was. All right, so I've mostly caught up to where we kind of left off there. This time, I have not taken any damage, so we are ready to paradrop our boss onto the wreckage site. Um, anyway, yeah, so if you do want to play this game, it is difficult to get a hold of. Um, I am really loving the, like, 1930s-esque uh, setting for this game, though. I do kind of wonder, though, does this game have Nazis? Because, like, anytime I think of the 30s, uh, my mind instantly goes to, like, Indiana Jones fighting Nazis. Like, literally, the 1930s is, like, an awesome time period, but I think it might just be because I love Indiana Jones, and, like, that is the most notable movie I can think of that takes place in the 30s. Like, I'm trying to think. Like, there's, like, The Aviator with, like, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, which is pretty good. Um, and that, that, actually, that's a pretty good movie. And The Rocketeer. The Rocketeer is a good movie, too. Also takes place in the 30s. The Rocketeer, man, like, that... In fact, that that movie has a lot more to do with this game because it's all about pilots and stuff. But that that movie actually had a lot of potential to be like kind of Disney's Indiana Jones before Disney had bought Lucasfilms. Because like I feel like you know the Rocketeer was not as good as Indiana Jones, but it was pretty cool. And the the 30s um, setting was totally awesome. Oh, also Who Framed Roger Rabbit? That's another awesome game that takes place in the 30s. Medusa Kestrels. Who are these jerks who are trying to steal our treasure? And also, do we have ammo or is it unlimited? I, it feels unlimited, so we're just going to keep using it. Boom. Oh, look at these guys. Look at these jerks. Okay, hold on. We have to, we have to get these guys. I feel like my radar... So my radar is not supposed to be glitching out like it is right now, but I feel like the fact that it is, it makes me feel like, oh, I almost hit that guy. Like, I have futuristic technology. Like, everyone's flying around these, like, 1930s planes. Meanwhile, my plane, for some reason, has, like, a digital readout and, like, Bluetooth wireless technology and stuff like that. Maybe all the enemies... Maybe they don't care at all about... Oh, God, not into that! Maybe they don't care at all about the uh, treasure that we're after, and they just care about getting my sweet, sweet tech. Okay, I seem to be under fire, but... Okay, I think my health is in the bottom left kind of HUD readout. And I seem to be all green all the way around. So let's try and, like, actually get this guy here. Ah, damn it. I am so bad at flying games. It is ridiculous. I think we learned way... Oh, not into the water! Oh, God! <laughs> damn it! Oh, I think we learned way back when, when I was playing, like, Rogue Squadron, that I'm, like, just... Terrible at flying games. Uh, I, I always, I always feel f 
feel uh, kind of sad for people who turn into my channel. They're like, yeah, let's play of Crimson Skies. This will be awesome. And they're expecting someone who's actually good at it. But like, okay, if you've never watched my channel before, what you are watching is one man's journey to play or try every game in the book. A thousand more video games you must play before you die. Am I good at every game? No. Do I beat every game? No. Do I just try and explore each game and have fun with it and get a first impression and try and see what it would be like if I played it back in the day? Yes, I do. And not being good at flying games, this this is essentially accurate. I can say with 100% honesty, this is accurately how it would be uh, if I were to play this game, if I were, if I had bought it back in the day. My wingman's been shot down. Oh man, this is this is rough going. Okay. Let's get some speed here. Come on, we can do this. Oh, he's we we got him zeroed. Come on. How's this guy not going down yet? Ugh. Can we fire rockets? Oh, we have rockets too. I forgot. Hold on. Zero, zero in on him. Like, how is he so much better at flying? Who taught you to fly? I would love to get their help, their help on some things, cause I am I am terrible. Okay. I I didn't do that by the way. The computer just leveled me out. I guess you can't go too high, too fast, or something. I don't know. I'm upside down at the moment. Just struggling to fight one guy. Okay, you know what? To hell with that. We're going to rocket down his, like, uh, little blimp here. How about that? Do you like this? Huh? Does this feel good? Yeah, come and fight me, or else I'm just going to destroy your Zeppelin, man. Kaboom, 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 kaboom! I don't know if that did anything, but it made me feel good because it probably annoyed them. Okay, here's the closest enemy. Man, I, I'm totally going down again, aren't I? I think one of my wings is about to give out. The one on the left is not looking healthy. Oh my god. Can I do this? Okay, trying to turn, get speed up. Oh, and I just freaking crashed. Oh my god. My gun hit ratio was 3%. That is horrible. Oh yeah, I like this by the way. Difficulty normal, hard or hardest. I is there no easy mode? All right, we're back one more time to give these guys a run for their money, or not. I figured out you can change weapons, so there's so, sort of three different calibers of guns. I'm gonna try this one. I feel like oh, and we do have ammo by the way. It's on it's on the far right, so we don't want to just be wasting our bullets. We do have like two thousand rounds, which seems like a lot. But I kind of don't want to waste it because, like, when when your accuracy is 3%, you need every bullet you can get. Okay. I think I might have just shot down our, our ally. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my rain of bullets landed mostly on our wingman. Okay. Let's see if we can get this guy. Come on, you. Gunning you down. Or Where are all these shots coming from? Oh, man, like... They fly right at me, and they fly over me before I can do anything. And, like, look how slow he turns. Oh, God, it's painful. It's painful. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, that was... That was... Not, I hit him. I'm pretty sure I saw bits of armor coming off of him. Okay, here we go. Oh, there, there's a dude. That's a... That's, that's an enemy. Here we go. Here we go. I'm just continuing to fire. Lining up the shot. Oh, come on. That That's close enough. Give me that. I need a win. Oh, I think he's smoking. We might actually shoot someone down. He's just like fleeing like, what the hell? How did that guy learn how to fly a plane? It won't let me like aim up. Oh my God. Like, okay. So this plane, you can't aim all the way up. Oh God. Into the water. Oh, damn it. <laughs> uh, this is painful to watch guys. How pain? No, I know it's painful. How painful is it to watch? Man, I can't even shoot down like a single one. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Oh, there's like bits of him flying all over the place. How is he not dead? How is he not dead? Come on. Ah, ah. This is like the best I can do. I was never meant to be a pilot. I'm an RPGer and a strategy gamer and a platformer. We shot somebody down. Oh, God. That's awesome. Oh, destroy the hydrogen tanks. I can do that. Oh my god. Oh, we did it. Oh, they're exploding. Let's get the hell out of here. Jam it into 11th, 11th gear and get the hell out of here. Is there an 11th gear? Third, first is fast. What's the fastest gear? I don't even know. See, I'm not even a car guy either. 
I'm not a car guy or a plane guy, but I shot one plane down. It's giving me the confidence. I realize that, you know, oh, I think I just shot up our ally. You know, we're, we're kind of trying to, like, find this, like, hidden treasure, Drake's fortune or whatever it is. Uh, but I, I have a feeling... Why am I sinking here? I have a feeling what we're going to figure out is that the real treasure was inside us all along. And, like, the real gold is friendship. So, I think what we're going to get from this fight is not gold, but confidence. I am using up all my good bullets, though. The only bullets that I've ever shot down and never play with. <laughs> Use them all up. So, uh... Oh, 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 I shot someone else down. Oh, it's doable. It's doable. This game can be played. Even by a total noob like me. Oh, man. And we did it. We did it. Oh, hold on. How do we dock? Uh-oh. How do we dock? <laughs> how do we dock? I think there's a button like A or L. Uh, a to auto dock. We figured it out. <laughs> I'm like so excited. Yeah! So, um, Jordan Weissman, by the way, who created this game, uh, he did develop Battletech, he did develop Shadowrun. In the 90s, I believe he had a hand in developing the virtual world, uh, which was some attempt, I think, to create, uh, basically MechWarrior before MechWarrior. It was like a 3D Battletech multiplayer game system, I believe. And so it's kind of interesting, because, like, you gotta start making board games and stuff, but he definitely has always had a hand in video games. So anyway, here we go, gun hit ratio. We got that up to a whopping 5%. And that's all it takes to earn 900 bucks, guys. We downed two planes with that. Yeah. <laughs> Is that normal? Like, I know, I feel like in all flying games, Pirates Blast Brits, that's uh, the Aloha Daily. That's us. You can read about your exploits. And here's a treasure that we got. But I feel like in all flying games, the like percentage of hitting is very, very low. Like in a first person shooter, 5% would be horrible. But in a in a flying game, I feel like flying games, it's way harder to hit enemies. And I think people who play flying games are just resigned to that and they're used to it. But like for someone like me who's from the first person shooter, uh, you know, perspective, playing a flying game where like you're only hitting like one in 20 shots just feels so bad, so wrong. I don't know. It's just like a different style of like game, I, I, I guess. But uh, anyway, we don't have to listen to this mission briefing because we can just go ahead and see it right here. Eliminate the British fighter escort. Destroy all but one of the British bombers. How about we destroy none? Because that is a lot more easily accomplished for me. Uh, capture the last bomber. Approach it from behind until you're right over it. Huh. Dock with the Pandora. Okay. We got this. I feel like... We're, we're, we've graduated from noob to, like, now we're, like, an ace pi uh, pilot here. I was going to say pirate, but I guess that's true. We're both a pirate and a pilot. So, as I say, this game is set in an alternate history America, where America broke up. I don't actually know the plot of, like, why America broke up, but I bet that's pretty interesting. I could see this being, like, an interesting setting for, like, a TV show or a movie or something like that. I could see, like, a Netflix show about Crimson Skies. Because, uh, again, it's kind of like adult tailspin. It's got pirates and it's got cool planes. Um... But yeah, what are some other cool alternate history movies? I was trying to think. Like, Who Framed Roger Rabbit's pretty cool. That's more... Oh, what the hell? Are you kidding me? Our wingman was shot down? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, you, you can't write this stuff, guys. And that... I 100% I am saying that is not my fault. That is 100% on my wingman. That's bull, man. I lasted for 12 seconds in that mission, and all 12 seconds, nobody could have done better than that. If your wingman slams into you at top speed, careens into you, freaking wingman, look at that, don't do that. First rule of being a fighter pilot pirate is don't fly right in front of the other guy. It is not the way to do things. Okay, let's go ahead and switch our gun, because I feel like I had much better luck. What? They shot one down already. All right, here we go. Boom, 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 boom. We're just riddling them with bullets. I think there's a little bit of auto aiming, so as long as you get kind of close, it kind of does the rest. Um, I might be taking a lot of bullets though. There we go. Destroy, destroy. Oh, come on, that's like right on the mark. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we're gonna take this one out too. Right on the mark. I'm upside down, but that's okay. But Roger Rabbit, that was more fantasy than anything. 
We. <laughs> I think what are like some other cool alternate histories? Oh man, the high castle is actually pretty cool. That's not really the 30s, but uh, it is pretty cool. Dock and destroy the ex the escort. All right, we're gonna sneak up behind this guy, and we'll sneakily dock right behind him. He won't suspect a thing. We're gonna be so sneaky, he's not even gonna notice. Am I am I behind him? Am I behind him? How, how do you dock? There we go. I think we got it. Wow! Man, we're figuring all sorts of things out. That docking might have occurred automatically, but whatever. I'm going to take it anyway. Wait, did he disappear? Where, where'd the bomber go? I, did I blink for a second? Did he Did he fly away? Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. What's, on, what's happening? Did I dock with him or not? Why am I looking at my plane through this weird view? What, what's... What has happened? Oh, there we go. Oh my god, I thought I docked, but I totally- I think I just pressed a button to, like, change the viewpoint. Okay, I just looked it up, and docking is A, so... dock. Oh, destroy escort first. Oh, I gotcha. I was only reading part of the message there. Oh, there's another guy, Sir Charles Emmett Winthorpe. Hmm. That sounds like a very British gentleman. Like, you can just tell from some names where someone's from. That guy is, like, really British. He's, like, so British, he's got, I don't know, I don't know, but he's British. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to think, like, what makes somebody really British? He loves the Queen. He's so British, he loves the Queen. Don't most British people love the Queen? I think most Canadians also love the Queen. The Queen's great. I mean, she, she doesn't really have too much, like, real authority, but she's, like, a great sort of figure, I think. I think that's why people love the Queen. Okay, there we go. Now we can dock with this guy. Okay, I don't know why I was having so much trouble that first time on that first level, but I could not hit anyone. This time, I'm having a lot better time, although, as I say that, I can't, I can't dock with this guy. Okay, here we go. We're going to dock. Dock. I'm pressing A. Nothing's happening. My plane is also, like, struggling to catch up to this thing. It has taken a lot of damage. Okay, here we go. A nice... This is like the, the the best pass we've ever gotten. Doc! 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 Oh! Damn it. Well, we hit it. I'm pressing A. What do you want me to do? How do you dock with a plane that does not want to dock back? This is like... That, I, don't, I don't know what you call this, man. This, this is like aggressive, aggressively docking. And I was shot down. And my guy's bailing. I love how your guy bails. Whee! Oh my god. Okay, let's try this one more time. See what we can make happen here. Also, why does the whole mission rest on me? There were three other wingmen in the sky. They couldn't have just finished the mission? Yeah, down th downing planes is not the problem now. Now the problem is actually, how do you dock with an enemy plane? It seems like if they don't want to dock back, the docking's not going to happen. I'm just, just saying. There might be a critical flaw. Oh, you son of a- Again! Again! Are you kidding me? Oh, that wingman's the worst! It's like they make you think that you're okay, and then just when you think you're okay, whoom! One of your wingmen flies right in your face. He didn't do it this time, though. He, what a dick. He just only does it, like, once in a while when it's, like, extremely inconvenient. He's like, I like to fly around my compadres, but only when it's, like, incredibly dangerous. They call me the little brother. Because I'm just as annoying as one. There we go. We shot down. Shooting down the bombers is, like, shockingly easy. All right, where is the next one? He's over here. So Microsoft, by the way, this is, like, an early Microsoft PC game. Not, like, early, early, but early enough. I remember when I was a kid growing up, like, Microsoft always seemed like they were trying to break into, like, the video game industry. Like, they had Monster Truck Madness, which I remember was, like, actually a pretty fun game. Um, there's uh, Mr. Winthorpe. Oh, British Peacemaker now. What happened to Winthorpe? Oh, interesting. All right, maybe maybe Winthorpe is like irrevocably irrevocably dead, and now we just have some generic pilot here flying around a Peacemaker. Uh, as soon as we get him in our crosshairs, he's dead. But Microsoft had Monster Truck Madness. They also had like Microsoft Flight Simulator, which was far more realistic than this. Um, they also had like another game that I remember as a kid. 
And actually, I can't remember the name of this. Maybe you guys can help me out with this. There was a Microsoft game that was kind of like Starship Troopers, where you were like a soldier fighting like alien bugs. And you had like a jetpack on that would allow you to do like extended kind of jumps over the place. But beyond that, it was just you shooting bugs. And to this day, I... Oh, there's another escort. Oh, there's more escorts. Okay, let's kill all these guys. Oh, maybe we didn't kill all the escorts last time. Oh my god, if that's the case, I need to learn how to read. It's not that I can't read, I'm just not really paying attention, I guess. Oh, cool, sound effects. But yeah, you just killed bugs. I'm trying to think, like, there were a few other Microsoft games I kind of remember vaguely. I feel like Microsoft games always felt, though, like, kind of, like, weird and sterile. Like, they kind of felt like what a video game would be like if, like, an engineer developed it, not, like, a game designer, you know? And actually, like, that's probably, like, very accurate, because, like, Microsoft is full of very talented engineers, not necessarily uh, with game developers. I mean, Gabe Newell, though, like, the creator of Half-Life and Valve and stuff came out of Microsoft. So it's not like Microsoft can't create good games. It's just, like, I always remember them kind of having this, like, they were very sophisticated, um, but they kind of, like, didn't have the cleanest user interface. They kind of, again, felt like an engineer developed it. Not like a gamer, per se. Not to say that people who, uh, you know, worked on these games didn't actually like video games or anything, but I don't know. If you guys understand what I'm saying, you guys know. Monster Truck Madness, though, I remember playing the shareware version or the demo version of that as a kid. Going over to my friend's house, like, every day after school. And we just played the crap out of that game. Like, did you guys ever do that as a kid? Like, get a shareware version of a game that only had, like, one level, but literally do, like, everything you could do in that level? Like, we would find hills to, like, you know, jump off of. It was, like, a just a one-player race. There's, like, one other opponent you were fighting against. And we would find ways to, like, push stuff onto the track to, like, wipe him out or, like, knock him upside down or, like, just pull pranks on him and troll him. Like, <laughs> it was one level, but, like, we got so much gameplay out of that one level. I feel like that doesn't really happen as much anymore these days because nowadays you can just download whatever game you want at any point and Steam has like 50,000 games like at a, at a moment's notice. When you were a kid, growing up in the 90s, it's like if you found a game that you liked, you pretty much, you know, and you didn't have the full version of it, you pretty much just had the shareware version. You just had to like play what you got. It's like you just played whatever you got and you just played it into the ground until you were like so bored of it you never wanted to see it again. Okay, so now the exciting music is gone. Now I'm pretty sure I can aggressively dock with this guy against his will. We're gonna dock whether you want to or not. Come here, Balmoral. Balmoral. What the hell's a Balmoral? I don't know. But. Wait, are you kidding me? I'm pressing A. I still can't dock? There's our target, by the way. Okay. Oh, not into the water! Oh my god. Approach it from behind until you're right over it. Okay. I mean, I'll try. Nothing I've tried so far has worked. So I'm willing to try anything at this point. So I guess I gotta be above it. Where we can get it now? This mission is over! What? The mission is over? Are you kidding me? I just figured out how to dock with this thing! Ah! <laughs> Also, I love how the colors are totally distorted and screwed up. All right, one more shot. And if we can't figure it out, we can't figure it out. Again, I, I make no claims to be good at fight at flying games, guys. So we're doing the best we can. But you know, again, failing is part of this series. This series was not started because I said, I want to be the best at every video game I play. This series was started because I said, I just want to have some fun with video games, try some new games and talk about them, reminisce about them. So have you guys played this game? Or did you guys ever play like the Xbox version of this game? Cause like if you guys have fun memories of this game or fond memories, fun or fond, hey there's a volcano right there. It'd be cool to like hear your take on these. Uh, I think we shot one down, maybe. Or he just was engaged in maneuvers to avoid us. But if you have fond memories, I'd love to hear that too. Like maybe you play, maybe this was the game you played into the ground after school with your friend in the 90s because that's what you did in the 90s. I remember when I was a kid, I could like, I never had a good computer. So I always remember like hanging out at friends' houses and playing on their computers. So like, that, like that's just what you did as a kid. That's also just what you did. I also remember like when I got, when I was a kid at, oh, that's one of my allies. I was trying to target him. 
I remember having like debates with friends about what was better, like PC or consoles. And at the time, when I was like really young, I was really into consoles. I really loved the NES and the Super Nintendo. But then kind of after those two, then I became like a PC love. Like, I was all about the PC, like the PC was the best. Nothing will beat the PC. And it's like I wouldn't even touch a first person shooter if it wasn't on uh, PC. Nowadays, I feel like uh, I'm kind of more back towards my console roots. I don't think that console is necessarily better, but oh my god, I got shot down. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh my god, we're all parachuting together. Look at that. It's like a commando squad getting dropped into a jungle, except it's me and like five enemies. Or else it's me and all my wingmen. We really messed up this mission. Okay, one more time. But yeah, I don't dislike PCs. Uh, but I just find myself gaming more and more on consoles these days. Uh, and oh, you son of a, don't you dare hit me again. The fact that your wingman can kill you in the first 10 seconds of this level is like ridiculous. I can't believe that's a feature in the game. A quote unquote feature. As if they wanted to uh, include that in the game. And all right, let's kill this battle. What, what is a battle morale? Sounds like an ancient demon. Sounds like the Balrog or whatever that, uh, uh, what was it, Gandalf fights in Lord of the Rings, you know? You shall not pass! Jeez, why am I getting shot to hell? I guess... What, like, what am I doing that's wrong this time? I feel like I was doing really well before, but it's, all these bombers are like... Hey, pro tip, don't fly in the middle of, like, a bomber squad, because apparently they're armed. I thought these things were essentially unarmed, but... Maybe not. <laughs> why am I doing so bad all of a sudden? All right, let's get out of this before I die. Before before I die. Before I die. Oh, my God. Look, my guy, like... Oh, man, he just... He, he got out of there in the last possible second. I wonder if it's possible for your guy to actually die. Like, to legitimately not make it out of the plane. Well, let's go ahead and wrap up our thoughts here. Oh, you son of a... I think we took him down. A wingman was shot down. How did I take no damage there? Every time! Well, not every time, more like 50% of the times. But that's a lot of percent of the times. Anyway, Crimson Skies here is one of the games, the book, A Thousand One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. And I have to say that, like, when it comes to, like, thinking... A wingman was shot, two of my wingmen are dead. The mission has just started and two of my wingmen are dead. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, when it comes to the thought of, like, you know, is this a game that you must play before you die? I I think it's a no. Uh, for a simple reason, if you're not a fan of flying games, like, like, I'm not really, you're gonna struggle, just like I'm struggling here. Now, does this mean that I think no one should play the game? Absolutely not. I just don't think that this is, like, a must-play for me. In fact, I'm really curious, having just played this one now, to go and play the Xbox version, because I feel like the Xbox version might be, like, a more easily played version of the game. Where it's, like, easier to kill enemies, it's harder to get shot down, it's easier to kind of control and do what you want to do. Like, this game definitely feels like a bit of a hybrid of a flight simulator and an arcade action actiony game, because it's obviously not a real flight simulator. I mean, there's so many things that are unrealistic about what's happening right now that we couldn't even quantify it if we tried to count. But the point is, is that I don't know how accessible this would be to people who aren't into flying games. And as much as I think the 1930s atmosphere and stuff is really cool, I think that there might be an even more accessible version of this game. So I really like the idea of the Crimson Sky series. I know that it is a cult, this series has like a cult following, um, and it's considered uh, very good, and I don't deny any of that. But I think in terms of wide appeal, you know, in terms of like, are most people going to like it? Um, I think it really depends. I think it, and you know, people who are into flying games, I don't think will. But hey, that's just my assessment here, and maybe that has more to do with the, the struggles I've been going through to try and play this game, and less to do with the game. Like, maybe that's not a sign the game's bad, maybe it's a sign that I'm bad. Which I am perfectly willing to entertain that option. Um, what do you guys think, though? Is Crimson Skies one of your most cherished PC games, and you squirmed and yelled at the screen watching my total butchery of play my playthrough here? Or is it a game that you've never heard of and you're kind of curious after watching this? Or did my playthrough here convince you you don't want to try this game out? Let me know your thoughts, your opinion of the game in the comments down below. And if you do have cherished memories of this game, feel free to share them. We can reminisce together about the fun times you spent playing this game after school, maybe. Um, also, if you have any tips or tricks, 
Those are always welcome, especially in games where I don't do very well. It's nice for in the comments for people to find some tips on how to actually play. But whatever the case may be, guys, I hope you have enjoyed checking out the world of Crimson Skies with me. I cannot kill anyone this round. Have you guys been noticing that? I mean, you, you definitely probably have, but like, I cannot get these guys. They just do not want to go down. Come here, die. Man, it's like I did really well for like two or three rounds, and like now I just, I'm doing terrible. Destroy escort first. Like by the time I destroy these guys, I'm not even gonna have time to dock with the bomber. Again, again, it's happening again. Uh, anyway, um, whatever you think of the game, hopefully you've enjoyed checking it out with me. Hopefully I've entertained you at least, and we've been able to talk about some interesting fun topics. If I have, go ahead, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and remember guys, if you ever do get involved in some kind of piratey pilot gang, just be sure not to freaking crash into your wingmates and bring them down with you. Like for the love of God, don't fly in front of your wingmates. That's like the one tip, even I know not to do that. So that's my advice for the day. And otherwise, you all take care of yourselves. Peace. We suck! <laughs> Pretty sure we finally killed our pilot. I'm just, just saying. There might be a critical flaw. Oh, you son of a, again!